Hello. Hi everyone. Uh, today we're gonna do a heart-centered meditation and a hatha class. It'll be about 45 minutes. So thank you guys for hopping on. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Haven't seen you in a while. Hey, Sean. Um, my boyfriend's sitting right in front of me and he joined. I don't know why he's doing that. <laughs> uh, so, um, how's everyone else doing uh, with all this craziness? Um, I've been a bit crazy busy with work and um, just working a lot of hours. I'm really fortunate to have a job at the moment. So, um, today I decided to do kind of a, a heart-centered meditation it's been something that's been on my mind just something to kind of slow down and um, just get recentered because we can get caught up in all the craziness and all of the chaos that's going on and we can uh, kind of dip into that fear mindset or that fear mindset and uh, this heart-centered meditation will be really great about con uh, for connecting with your heart versus uh, connecting with what's going on in your mind, which can be kind of scary sometimes, or we can just get sucked into to everything that's going on. And so uh, coming back to our heart, um, this meditation will be really helpful to help us connect to ourselves. And um, what did you say, good afternoon? That's awesome. Yeah, this is a really great time to kind of just like chill out and um, be still and actually just have some fun for once, you know, because if we're constantly working all the time, um, you know, we don't have time for that fun stuff sometimes. So it's great if you're keeping up with that mindset and uh, really glad that you could join. <laughs> hey guys, how's it going? Uh, so I was just saying that um, this heart-centered meditation that we're that we're going to start soon, it's all about just slowing down and asking yourself like what you need. And uh, um, the mind itself is kind of like a brain within our bodies, um, outside of our brain. So uh, if that makes sense, so it's where a lot of our truth uh, comes from, and it's almost like our our intuitive center of part of ourselves that we don't really tap into that often just because our mind likes to take control over everything. So, um, uh, yeah, so this is one of my favorite meditations that I do in my classes. It basically just helps us to kind of get centered and to slow down a little bit and to ask our hearts kind of what's going on and uh, just to take some of the stress off. And so this will be a couple minutes and then we'll get into the Hatha class. And uh, my Hatha classes are kind of a mix of like Vinyasa, Ashtanga, um, Bikram. Basically, it's all about just connecting your mind and your body. So what that means is we move quite a bit slower and we hold the poses a little bit longer. So that can be a good or a bad thing depending on where your practice is at. Uh, for me, I love doing it because um, when we hold poses and things start to burn or get a little bit harder, um, it really shines a light on what where our mind is at and where our mind goes when things start to get difficult. So um, it's a really, Hatha practice is a really great tool that you can use to become aware of what's going on in your minds because our minds just heavily affect our bodies and our realities and when we start to kind of pinpoint what is going on, um, in our minds and we have the opportunity to make changes in our lives and, and, uh, and stop being like a victim and just take responsibility of our lives and, and create our realities, which is really, really empowering and really, really cool to do. So with that being said, come into a seated position. Anything that's comfortable, if you have a block or something, you need a little boost, you can sit on a block. With your hands on your knees. Oh, bummer. Okay. Well, this will be this video will be live for 24 hours, so I'm going to download it and save it to my YouTube as well if you guys want to do this practice uh, later too. So, just come to a seated position with your hands on your knees, eyes closed. And just begin to focus on your breath.
allowing the mind to slow down a little bit. And then just take both of your hands and place them over your heart. And just begin to feel the heart beating underneath your hands. The first thing we want to do is slow down. And the second thing is to become aware of the heart. Just feel it beating within our chest. Just acknowledge that it is there, keeping us alive and just moving this energy all along our bodies all day long. We don't even have to think about it. Our hearts are very, very powerful. They're very beautiful. Begin to send some gratitude to your heart giving it lots of thanks. Feeling the body relax even more. And just imagine a light coming from your heart. It can be any light that just comes to your mind or any color that comes to your mind. Normally green is associated with the heart chakra, so if that uh, feels right for you, just imagine this green orb in the center of your chest beginning to surround the heart. Feeling the heart beating underneath your hands. Feeling gratitude. And just imagine that light beginning to expand outside of the body, expanding a few feet outside the body and getting larger and larger. Feeling the energy of gratitude and thanks expanding out to anyone around you and sending it to people you love people in need, sending as much love and gratitude as you can. And just sitting in that feeling of gratitude. And for the next few moments, just begin to pay a little bit more attention to the heart beating underneath your hands. Sitting here, feeling this orb of light and energy surrounding you. Allowing yourself to get even more still and relaxed. And if you have a question on your mind or an intention you'd like to focus on for practice, now is the time to ask your heart a question. Maybe you've been a little worried lately. Allowing yourself to tap into the stillness and the calmness and the steadiness of your heart. The heart doesn't always speak to us and long sentences or paragraphs. Sometimes it's just a word or a feeling. So allow yourself to be open to whatever comes up.
giving yourself a few more moments to enjoy this bubble of energy that is surrounding you, tapping into the gentle presence and energy of the heart. Slowly begin to release the hands down to your knees and gently open your eyes. And just take a big inhale in and exhale out. One more time, inhale and exhale. So when we do the heart-centered meditations like that, um, sometimes we can get in our heads because we're like, we ask ourselves questions and we don't get answers or we might feel frustrated because our mind is going crazy and that's totally fine, that's totally normal. Uh, it's just something that you can do every once in a while throughout the day uh, if you feel like you need to recenter just sitting still. The more that you do this, it's kind of like working a muscle, you know, just any type of meditation you do. It's just something you get used to and you start to notice subtle changes of connecting with yourself every time. And it can be really subtle until over time you realize like, wow, I'm noticing a little bit more quiet upstairs in my mind. Or um, you're just noticing more calm about yourself and it's a really amazing thing. So uh, don't get frustrated if you're... Um, feeling like you're not connecting with the meditation or there are some days that you just don't connect. There are days that I sit in meditation and my mind is all over the place. So it's just normal. It's just sticking with it and, and creating um, just a sacred practice for yourself and knowing that there's no expectation attached to any feeling or experience that you're having. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to move on to the Hatha portion of the class. So... You don't really need anything, even if you don't have a mat, um, you can just do this on your carpet or your floor, it's fine. Um, if you need a block, you can grab one. I don't think that we'll really be using one, but um, you can bring one if you need one for modifications. I'll provide modifications. Again, this is a slower pace Hatha class. Um, I have about a half hour left for it. So if you just come onto your hands and your knees, Coming into just a tabletop position, we're just going to start off uh, in dancing line. This is something I start pretty much every single one of my classes with. So this is a free-for-all movement. I recommend closing your eyes here and just beginning to take circles with your body, your shoulders, just anything that feels good. So you can come into child's pose or upward facing dog. You can stretch your wrists and just switch the position of your hands. And this is a free-for-all movement, so this is an opportunity for you to kind of just move your body and find those spots that are feeling a little rusty or tight uh, that need a little extra love. Maybe you've been sitting all day like myself. I've been sitting at a computer screen for the last nine hours or so, and so this feels really nice to kind of just start to open up my hips and move my wrists around a little bit. And just come back to a neutral position. On an inhale, we're going to drop the belly down and lift the chin and the chest up. And on an exhale, round the upper back through the lower back, pulling the shoulder blades apart. And inhale, lift the chin up, arching the lower back. And exhale, reversing, pushing away from the ground. Last one, inhale, lift the chin up. And exhale, reverse. Come back to a neutral spine. Tuck your toes under, push your hips up and back into your first downward facing dog, taking a few moments just to walk out the feet a little bit. Maybe push the hips from side to side. Again, just finding 
uh, more space in your body. Finding those spots that need uh, to be opened up. Maybe they're feeling super tight. So finding those places and just hanging out there for a moment just to begin to start to open those areas up. And then just coming back to a normal downward facing dog. And just deeply bend your knees. Start to bring your stomach as close to the tops of your thighs as you can. Pushing away from the ground, finding length in the entire spine. And just bringing your gaze between your feet. From here, push the hips up and back. Like you're trying to push the hips up towards the back upper corner of the wall, the room that you're in. And then slowly begin to bring the heels down until you feel a stretch in the backs of your legs. So your heels don't have to touch the ground. You can just hang out here if this feels good for you. Take a big inhale in. And exhale out. Inhale in. And exhale. Start to walk your hands all the way to your feet. And inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, lift the arms all the way towards the sky. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, lift the arms all the way up. And exhale, fold. Take your feet about the width of your mat with your toes slightly turned out. Start to bend your legs, lower the hips down, coming into Malasana Squat. Bring your hands to your heart center, elbows to the insides of your knees. If this is a bit much, you can take a block and sit on it. Right now, we're just gently opening up the hips a little bit. Good. And maybe just rocking from side to side as you start to open up the hips a little bit more. And then just press your thumbs into the chest. And begin to roll the shoulders back, feeling more openness in the front of the chest. Release the hands to the ground, come back into your forward fold. And inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Walk your hands forward, coming into plank pose. So finding your stance here in plank. If you find like your hips go up really high, just bring the hips down a little bit lower. Spreading your fingers wide apart, really push away from the ground. And as you push away from the ground, just begin to scoop the insides of your elbows forward. So try to get your the insides of your elbows to either face each other or face the wall in front of you. You wanna create this external rotation in the upper arm bones, this helps create more stability in your plank pose. It also helps to work the triceps a little bit more here too. Then just push the heels to the back wall and then slightly tuck the tailbone under to help engage that lower core. Then continue to breathe. You can always come down to your knees for a modification. A big inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. And exhale are all the way down to the ground. Untuck your toes. Inhale up a cobra. And exhale lower down. Inhale. Bring your uh, hands out to the side of your mat. Come up onto the fingertips. Lift up. And exhale lower down. Inhale lift up. And exhale down. Bring your hands next to your chest. Tuck your toes under. Push yourself back up to plank. And exhale, downward facing dog. Just three deep breaths here. Again, taking that deep bend in the knees and pushing your hips up and back to create more length in the entire spine. And 
start to walk your hands back to your feet. And just slightly bend your knees here. Relax your head and your neck. And then inhale, lift the arms all the way towards the sky. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, lift the arms all the way towards the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Bring your feet about hip distance apart. Use your peace fingers to grab your big toes. And inhale, halfway lift, deeply bend your knees, extend the crown of your head forward. And exhale, fold forward, bringing your stomach to the tops of your thighs. So just deeply bend your knees here. And then if you feel comfortable enough, you can start to straighten your legs. But if your stomach starts to come off the tops of your thighs, then just go back and fold a little bit deeper and bend your knees a little bit deeper. Just relax your shoulders from your ears if you're feeling tense in any other area. Just try to find um, re release in any of those areas you may be holding tension. Slowly release your toes, inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Inhale, walk the hands all the way forward into plank. Exhale, it out. Continue with your breath here, creating stabilization in the shoulder girdle by creating that external rotation in the upper arm bones. It's almost as if you're slightly bending the elbows back towards you. It's okay to have that slight bend, especially if you hyperextend in the arms. Just being aware of what's going on in your body. And if this starts to get hard, you can always come down to your knees. If you'd like to push through, just find more length and depth in your inhales. And your exhales. Uh, when you lengthen the inhales, you're just increasing the energy that's building up within you. And on your long exhales, you just relax the body a little bit more. Let a big inhale in. Exhale out. Big inhale in. Exhale lower down to your knees. Lower your chest down in between your hands. So your butt is kind of sticking up here and then slowly slide forward. And inhale to upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. Bring your feet together at the back of your mat. Kick your right leg up towards the sky. And exhale, place your right foot in between your hands. Come high up on your back toes, come up onto your fingertips, extend your chest and the crown of your head forward. Squeeze your left quad and inhale, lift the arms up into crescent lunge. Taking a few moments here to get into this position. So just pulling that left hip forward a little bit more, slightly squeezing that left glute and sinking a little bit deeper so that right knee is in line with your right ankle. And if your left leg is bent, just begin to straighten it a little bit more as you push the heel back. And inhale, lift the arm towards the sky. And exhale, relax the shoulders away from the ears. Again, just paying attention to what's going on in the body. Maybe your leg is your quads are starting to burn a little bit, or your arms are. Just notice where the mind is going. And just see the narrative that is playing in your mind. What is going on in our minds while we do yoga is the same that is going on in our minds during the day that we may not even be aware of. Big inhale in. Exhale, open up, warrior two. So extending your arms out and just walk the back foot back a little bit more to create a bigger stance here, especially if you have longer legs. 
sink that front knee forward so that right knee is in line with your right ankle, almost as if you're trying to push that right knee towards your right pinky toe. So you create a little bit more openness in that inner thigh. Uh, and shift a little bit more of the weight into the outer edge of your back foot. Slightly squeezing that left glute. And just lift the crown of your head up towards the sky. Create more length in the spine. Exhale, relax the shoulders from the ears. Remembering to deepen your breath in this Hatha class. Hello to whoever is waving at me. It's too far away, but I can't see who that is. But thank you for joining. <laughs> Uh, lengthening the inhales and exhale, lengthening. The inhales is what creates more strength and energy throughout the entire body. And on the exhale is when we create the relaxation. So one more inhale in. Exhale, drop the right forearm to the inside of the right thigh. Send the left arm up and over the head. Coming in into extended side angle. Stick with me here. You'll have a little bit of relief after this pose. Continue to breathe. So you can bring the forearm to the inside of the side. If you'd like to have it hover here, you want to use a little bit more core. A little bit more leg work you can hang out here or you can place the foot on the inside of the leg just two more breaths here and bring your hands to frame your right foot walk that back foot up a little bit more and then straighten the right leg and fold over, coming into pyramid pose. So this is where you may need a block if you have one. You can always use one for support. There's just a few adjustments here. The back foot's gonna be at about 45 degree angles. Just take a look at your hips. Pull that left hip forward and the right hip back. And then begin to fold over the front leg. So if your front leg is bent, that's completely fine. You can hang out here and then begin to straighten the leg until you feel that stretch. You want to feel that stretch in the belly of the muscle here. If you're feeling the stretch closer to the knee or the hip, we're stretching out the attachments um, of our ligaments here. And that's not what we want. We want to feel the stretch in the belly of the muscle. This is where we find the length. This is where we create the flexibility. Relax your head and your neck. Slowly begin to bend that right knee. And coming up onto the fingertips, keep that right leg bent. And then slowly begin to extend that left leg back. Bring your hands to your heart center. Coming into your modified warrior three. We're just going to spend three breaths here. So stick with me. Continue to open up through the heart. And just begin to roll the shoulders back. So you bring the shoulder blades a little bit closer together to open up and create more space in the chest. Big inhale in. Exhale, straighten the leg, slowly swing that left leg forward. Two breaths here, big inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale in. Exhale, release that left leg down. Shake out the right leg. <laughs> we did a lot of standing and balancing on this right leg, so we're just going to stretch out that glute a little bit. So I shift the weight into the left foot. Hug your right knee into your chest. And then come into a standing figure four. We're taking the outside of your right ankle over top of your left knee. Hands to heart center. Start to bend that left leg, sink the hips down and back. 
If this is as far as you go, that's great. If you want something a little bit more deeper, you can bring your hands to the ground. You can sink the hips back a little bit more until you feel that stretch in the outer hip. Slowly come back to standing. Coming into Tadasana with your feet about hip distance apart. Inhale, lift the arms all the way up. In exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, step back into a plank. Big inhale in. Exhale it out. Inhale in. Exhale out. Inhale. Exhale, lower the knees down, lower the chest down. Inhale, slide forward into upward facing dog. Exhale to downward facing dog. Two deep breaths here. Bring your feet together at the back of your mat. Kick your left leg all the way up towards the sky. And exhale, place your left foot in between your hands. Come high up onto your fingertips. And just press your right heel back behind you. And inhale, lift the arms up towards the sky into crescent lunge. I'm gonna switch directions so you guys can see. So I'm not, uh, my back isn't facing you. So just spend a few moments here to get yourself adjusted. If you need to bring your hands to your hips to kind of see where you're at in alignment, you can do that as well. So sinking the hips a little bit lower. So the left knee is in line with your left ankle, pulling the right hip forward and the left hip back. Start to bend the right knee and then straighten it as much as you can, pushing the right heel back as much as you can. Good. Bring the hands back up towards the sky. Just slightly squeezing that right glute so that you can start to create more length and openness in that right hip flexor. And deepening the inhales and lengthening the exhales. So finding power and strength in the inhales. And on the exhales, this is where you find a little bit of relief, a little bit of relaxation as you relax into the pose. And just two more breaths here. Start to open up into warrior two, dropping that back foot down. And just bring the feet a little bit farther apart from each other. So your front heel can be in line with either the arch of your back foot or the heel. Doesn't matter. Whatever feels more comfortable in your body. So finding your stance, sinking the hips deeper so that left knee is in line with your left ankle, tracking more towards the pinky toe. Extend the arms out. And just seeing where your balance is in this pose. If you feel like a lot of stress and pressure is on that front quad, just see if you can shift a little bit more of the weight into the back foot, into that back outer edge or the outer edge of your back foot. And as you do this, you may even feel the arch of your right foot pick up off the mat just a tiny little bit. And as you do that, you might feel that right glute engage a little bit. I don't know about you guys, but my body is shaking a little bit right now. This is the beauty of Hatha, right? We become aware of what's going on in our bodies. It's a huge indication of what is going on in our minds. So we pay attention to our thoughts, what we're thinking, what we're feeling. You may want to get out of this pose right now. Your muscles may be screaming. This is where 
begin to practice the calm, where we practice being an observer of our emotions, of our thoughts, and we don't get engaged. This is where we find peace within ourselves, not just when we're holding poses, but also in our everyday lives when things start to trigger us or get hard. We learn how to be the observer. Big inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bring that left arm to the inside of the left thigh. Raise the right arm up and over your head. Coming into extended side angle again, taking your variation. You can bring the left hand to the inside of that left foot if you need a little relief. You can float that left hand if you need a little bit more core work here or leg work, or you can bring the inside or the left elbow to the inside of your left thigh. Just a few breaths here, guys, before we slow down a little bit into pyramid. So stick with me here. When things start to get tough, remember to deepen your breath. Use your breath as a tool to begin to move that energy. Is this resistance we feel in these poses? Those are the blocks that we need to move through in these classes. We use our breath as a tool to move that energy, to move through those blocks. Slowly begin to fold over that front leg. So picking that right leg up, bringing it a little bit closer. Coming into pyramid pose. So if you need a block here, you can place your hands on the block to give you a little bit more height. And you can bend that left leg just to get a little situated before you really get into the pose. There's different ways to get into this. Pulling that right hip forward and the left hip back so that your hips are in one straight line. And then fold over your front leg. Relax your head and your neck. Give yourself a moment to slow down. And just scan your body and see if you are holding tension anywhere. If you are, relax. begin to bend that left leg, come up onto the fingertips, come high up on your back toes. From here, take your hands to your heart center, press your thumbs into your chest, roll the shoulders back, extend the crown of the head towards the wall, pick up that left leg with that or right leg, with your left leg still bent, just two or three breaths here. Modified warrior three, continue to breathe. Slowly begin to straighten out the left leg. Swing that right leg forward, extend it out. Two breaths here. Slowly release the right leg down. Shake out the left leg. We're going to stretch out that left glute. We did a lot of standing on that. So switch the um, weight into your right leg, hug the left knee into your chest, come into a standing figure four, hands to heart center, sink the hips down and back. Slowly release that left leg and just take your feet about hip distance apart. Shake your arms out a little bit, shake your legs out a little bit. Inhale, lift the arms all the way up towards the sky. Slightly bend your knees as you exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. This time, uh, take your hands underneath your feet. 
So your palms are facing up, toes are tickling the wrists. I'm going to Parahastasana Gorilla Pose. Again, your knees can be bent here, stomach is glued to the tops of your thighs. Relax your head and your neck. Relax your shoulders. And from here, you can start to straighten your legs out until you feel that stretch either in your hamstrings or your calves. underneath your feet. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Step your feet back into plank. We're almost there, guys. We're going to start to slow down, coming into um, a few stretches before we go into Shavasana. So the most hard part is over after this plank. Continue to breathe with me. Extending the crown of your head forward, bringing the shoulders away from the ears, then pushing the heels back, take a big breath in, exhale out, inhale in, and exhale, hips up and back into downward facing dog, big inhale in, exhale out, bring your feet together, Big inhale in, exhale, bring knees down to the mat, untuck your toes, push your hips back onto your heels, coming into child's pose. You can come into child's pose with your knees together or if you'd like to bring your knees apart, just keep your um, feet together, pushing the hips back onto your heels. If this is still too much, you can always grab a block or a pillow, whatever you have at home and just use that as a little bit of a bolster um, if that's too much of a strain on your knees or your hips. And just allow yourself to melt into the mat. Just deepening your breath, lengthening the inhales and the exhales to help slow the heart rate down. come up into tabletop. From here, push your hips over to the side, swing your legs out in front. From here, with your legs extended out in front, just hug your right knee into your chest. Drop your right knee out to the side. Coming into Janu Shashasana. So sit up as straight as you can lengthening the spine all the way up towards the sky, lift the arms up, and take a, a bend in your left knee. So bring that left heel a little bit closer to you, flexing your left toes. On an exhale, fold forward, bring your stomach to the tops or the top of your left thigh and reach um, for your foot. So we're going to be in this kind of awkward position here, but you, the thing to remember here is to get that deep stretch in the belly of the hamstring. So from here, your goal is to keep your stomach glued to the top of your thigh. So from here, you can start to inch that left heel forward. And as soon as you start to feel your stomach come off of your thigh, that is the point where you need to relax and fold over the leg. to make your way out. Extend your right leg out in front. 
Hug your left knee into your chest. And then drop your left knee out to the side. Sit up as straight as you can here. Bend your right leg. Inhale, lift the arms all the way towards the sky. Exhale, fold over the front leg. Reach for those right toes. And from here, begin to inch that right heel forward until you feel that deep stretch in your uh, hamstring or you may feel this in the lower back. Either one is fine. Just two more breaths here. Rise all the way up. And hug both of your knees into your chest, coming into a tight ball on a seated position. From here, drop your knees out to the side, coming into a seated butterfly pose. Sorry if you guys have been uh, talking to me. I can't see, I'm like super far away from you guys, um, but I will check before this is over. Um, so stick with me here, just our final stretches before we go into Shavasana. So if this bothers your knees, you can put uh, blocks underneath your knees or pillows or whatever you guys have. Or if this is just enough for you, you can hang out here. Just cupping your hands underneath your toes, sitting up a little bit straighter, so taking a little bit of a tiny arch in the lower back, like you're trying to push the belly button forward. So if you feel a nice stretch in your hips here, you feel like there's opening here, you can hang out. Or if you'd like to fold forward, leading with your chest. And then when you can't lean any farther, this is when you just relax over your feet. Taking four or five deep breaths here, just allowing your hips to slowly open up. Push yourself up, extend your legs out in front, shake your legs out a little bit, and then lower all the way onto your backs. Hug your right knee into your chest, guide over to the left, coming into a recline twist. So you can take any variation you like here. This isn't, um, like you don't have to be in a specific twist, you can be here with both of your legs if that feels good, or one, or if you'd like to go for a deeper stretch, you can reach for that uh, right foot and extend out. So whatever you want to make of this, this is just a final twist to kind of do a final wringing of the body before we rest and relax at the end of our practice. Bring the right knee back into the chest, give it a nice squeeze, release the right leg out, hug your left knee into your chest, bring it over to your right, extend that left arm out to your left, and taking the same twist variation on this side as you did the other side. Just allow yourself to relax a little bit more. 
You're holding tension in your shoulder through your face. Just allow yourself to melt a little bit more into your mat. Guide that left knee back into your chest. Bring your right knee back in so you're coming into a tight ball. Give yourself a super, super tight squeeze and then release both of your legs out. Coming into Shavasana. You can hang out here or you can bend your knees and teepee them in together. And just slightly tuck the tailbone under. If this really bothers your lower back to just lay flat in Shavasana, this is just another option. And just shimmy the shoulder blades down the back, bring a little bit closer. This creates more space in the heart. And just lay here for a few minutes for your final Shavasana, allowing yourself to do a final scan of the body, surrendering to your mat. Finding as much stillness as you can here. And stillness is where we find the healing, where we find the calm. We've used our breath, the entire practice, to move the energy. To find the areas where we were feeling resistance and blocks. And we were able to work through that, through movement and breath. And here we are at the final Shavasana finding stillness to fully release and let go and surrender. begin to bring awareness back into your body. Noticing how it feels now. This is the beginning of class. Bringing movement to your fingers and your toes. Just eventually extending the arms over your head for a full body stretch. Rolling onto one side of the body, just curling up into a tiny ball. And pushing yourself all the way up to a seated position. 
I'll come a little bit closer so I can see all of you guys. <laughs> uh, I hope you guys are feeling a little bit more relaxed and uh, that you enjoyed the Hatha class and the meditation. And um, just so glad you guys joined me. This is just kind of a snippet of a, a shorter Hatha class that um, it's actually my favorite class to teach because it's slower and more mindful and it's uh, a little bit less about the physical and just more about the the mind body connection and using your breath to move energy throughout the body and it's just such a, a deep and very powerful way to connect with yourself when you're moving a little bit slower and you're more mindful about uh, what's going on in your mind and your body at the same time and just seeing how they're so interconnected so um, if you guys like this class, I will be doing one class a week, whether it's a Hatha or Vinyasa, this will be available for 24 hours here on IG Live TV. I'm still kind of getting the hang of this, so um, still trying to figure it out. And uh, I will be loading these videos to YouTube as well. I'll put that link in my profile um, if you guys can't do the class until later, so you will have access to it. And uh, this is just a free class. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm really blessed to have another source of income with my marketing agency. And uh, I just wanna teach to provide uh, you guys a space to come back to yourself and all of this craziness um, and just uh, give yourself some time to slow down. And um, I, I'm not sure what's going on in everyone's lives right now. I know some people might be in some rough spots or some people might be doing okay or things might be really good, I don't know. But uh, regardless, I'm here if anyone uh, just needs kind of a break from, from all of the craziness. So I hope you enjoyed my class and thank you to each and every one of you for joining. It really means so much to uh, see all of you guys here. So if you have any questions or any suggestions about any other classes that you would uh, like to see me teach, uh, just let me know. I took off this little like lensing and makes the room look wider. So um, if you're wondering what just happened. All right, so thanks again, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.